Good day, good day, good day, everyone. And once again, your favorite uncle is back. And uh, this time we're going to be looking at the nature of roots. Uh, so if you haven't subscribed, please just make sure that you're part of the family. And of course, you can always reach us, uh, you know, talk to us, info at mlungisingosi.co.za. That's our email. And of course, you can uh, get us on social media at underscore mlungisingosi on um, Instagram, um, Lungisinkosi ZA on Facebook as well as on TikTok as well. Right now, um, I want to just quickly delve into this. Uh, this is quite a, you know, a loaded section. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, make sure that I unpack it as much as I possibly can. Right. So we're talking about the nature of roots. Now, before I even get started with that. OK, so what I want to do is. Let's talk about, you know, um, uh, number systems, okay, or the classification of numbers uh, for that matter. So we've got different number systems or the, uh, different classifications uh, for numbers. So we've got what we would call natural numbers, okay? You'll understand a little later on when I talk about this. So when we talk about uh, natural numbers, so these are numbers from uh, one, that's two, that's three, and so on and so forth, right? So you wouldn't necessarily have negative numbers. So for instance, when you are counting the number of people, you can never say negative 20 people, right? So those would be called natural numbers. You cannot get two and a half people. Um, so in this case, those would be whole numbers, right? So um, in this case, I mean, uh, we can also call them counting numbers, okay? Uh, when we talk about counting numbers, in this case, we uh, are also including zero, okay? So um, I'm just adding that one there. So we say zero, one, two, uh, three, da, 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 right? So um, in this case, when we talk about, again, uh, counting we can actually count from zero, right? Uh, but when you're talking natural numbers, so this is when you are telling up, you are literally counting the number of things that are there. Um, you know, you cannot have zero oranges, for instance, right? It's either they are oranges or they're not. And when they are there, then you have either one, two, three, or four oranges, right? So those would be natural numbers. Okay, so, but when we are counting, obviously we are including zero there. And then there's what we call integers, okay? All right, uh, you know, sometimes spelling these things, uh, you know, just gets in the way. Uh, so integers. Now, what are integers? So in this case, that would include negative numbers, right? So if we talk about integers, so that's negative three, you know, all the way, um, uh, you know, negative infinity, all the way, negative two, negative one, and you'd say zero, and that's one, two, and three, and going forward, right? So in this case, we are taking whole numbers, but that is also inclusive of negative numbers, right? Now, I'm going to get into this one. Um, then we've got what we call rational numbers. Now, please, I want you to listen carefully, right? So in this case, when we're talking about uh, rational numbers, these are numbers that can be presented as a ratio, okay? So for instance, if I take a number like 1 over 2, that's a rational number, okay? So 0 0.5 would be a rational number. Why? Because it can actually be represented as a, uh, you know, as an, as, as a, um, you know, taking an integer over another integer. So when you talk about a rational number, it's when we've got an integer divided by another integer. So if we can represent it as a fraction, by the way, please just remember, even whole numbers can be represented as fractions, right? Because if you think about two, right? If I represent that as a fraction, that would be two over one, right? So that would be an integer over another integer. So in this case, we know that we can represent that as an integer over another integer, right? So these are what we call rational numbers. Now, let's go to the next one. 
that we call irrational numbers right or you can say irrational numbers right so these are numbers that we cannot represent as a ratio right so in this case they cannot be written as um so they cannot uh be written as an integer over another integer okay so in this case what sort of numbers are those um so if you think about the square root uh of a, a number that is not a perfect square let's say the square root of three right so if you took the square root of three uh, you wouldn't be able to write that as a um you know as as a rational number if you think about the number pi you know uh, being 3.14 dot 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 it's got lots and lots of of numbers look um so if you take 3.14 3.14 would be a rational number why because you can actually represent this as 3 uh, 4 uh, 314 right divided by a thousand so you can take that as an integer over an integer uh, but in this case remember that 3.14 is only an approximation of the real number or if you take um if you say to me well pi is 22 over 7 again 22 over 7 is a rational number right uh, in this case because it it is a, an integer over another integer however remember that this number is an approximation of the real um uh, you know uh, real number uh, I mean, a real a pi value, right? Now, in this case, I want you to please be mindful of this, right? Then we've got uh, numbers. So you can look at logarithms here. If you, you know, take the log of two, for instance, you might find that uh, this would give you a rational number, right? Uh, an irrational number, that is, okay? Or you can take trig ratios for that matter. Now, um, then we've got what we call imaginary numbers, okay? Now, what are those imaginary numbers? It's essentially numbers that don't exist, okay? Uh, you know, um, w mathematicians were basically just trying to find something to represent there. And in this case, when we take the square root of a negative number, right? So if you take the, uh, the square root of negative 1, in this case, we end up in uh, with a um, what we call um, an imaginary number. Okay, right. So um, when we have a combination of uh, you know an imaginary number and a real number, uh, in this case, then we have what we call complex numbers. Okay, but I won't really talk much about that. So when we get the square root of a negative number, then we know that uh, those would be. Um, you know, uh, said to be imaginary, right? Now, we can ask, what does this all have to do with the nature of roots? So this is where we are going now with this lesson. Because when we're talking about roots, right? So if you think of a quadratic equation, right? Ax squared plus bx plus c. What it enables us to do um, is to be able to draw this as a parabola. So, for instance, uh, we can talk at length about this. We'll come back to it. Um, for those of you who haven't watched uh, our lessons on functions, this would be a good time to go through those lessons. So, what you do is we can actually factorize this um, and you find x-intercepts, right? So, these x x intercepts we call them the roots of the equation right of the function right so in this case these are our roots so we want to know right when your parabola passes through these roots then we know okay so it means there are real roots right I'm I'm going to explain in a in in a little bit, right? So if there are roots, let's say this is going to be minus one and let's say four over there. So it means that there are real roots, okay? So it means the nature of the roots to that equation are real, right? Uh, I'll talk about it just now. However, so then 
how do we find those roots? We can factorize or we use the quadratic formula, right? So you remember that's minus b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. So this is our quadratic formula, right? So we know if we wanted to find the roots of the equation, we would use our uh, quadratic formula, right? Now, what then happens, ladies and gents, and I want you to please pay attention. What would determine the nature of the roots of this equation, right? Remember, we spoke about imaginary numbers taking the square root of a negative number, right? And in this case, you realize there is a square root here and there is something underneath that square root. Usually we call this something here the discriminant. So in this case, the discriminant is equal to b squared minus 4ac, right? But now, how is the discriminant involved in all of this? And please, as I said, ladies and gents, stay with me so that you can understand, uh, in this case, what we are doing. Right. So now, if I find that my discriminant is positive or my discriminant is zero, now think about it. If this becomes positive, it means that we can take the square root of a positive number, isn't it? So the square root of a, a positive number gives us real solutions. We can get numbers thereof, right? So in this case, once our delta value, the discriminant is positive, okay? So if the discriminant is positive or is zero, okay? Then we say, all right, in that case, it means that we are dealing with the real roots. It means those roots exist, right? They are not imaginary. They exist. It's actual real numbers that are involved there. We would be able to plot them on a graph, okay? So if the value of delta is positive, then I know that I'm dealing with real roots. Why? Because I know if I substitute it there, I can get the square root of a negative number. Okay, right. Now, in this case, um, yeah, maybe let me just keep to that color there. So then I know if I find delta to be negative. So if delta is negative, right? Think about it. What would happen if that value, uh, I mean, uh, that whole value there, uh, b squared minus 4ac becomes negative, it means you cannot find the solution, right? You can't find the solution. Why? Because we cannot take the square root of a negative number. It no longer becomes real, but it becomes imaginary, right? So if that b squared is equal, uh, minus 4ac rather is, is negative, right? So in that case, we say those roots are uh, not real, or you can say that roots are imaginary, okay? So those would be imaginary roots, or you can say that it's non-real roots, right? So, again, if delta is a perfect square, now please, I want you to listen again, so we can get, what is a perfect square? If I say 9, 9 is a perfect square, right? 6 isn't a perfect square, right? Because I know 9 is made of 3 squared, but what about 6? In this case, um, I cannot take two numbers uh, that I square, or, or uh, let me rather say two whole numbers, square them and get 6, right? So in this case, uh, 9 is a perfect square. So if I can take the square root of 9, right, I get a number which is 3, right? If I get this, if I take the square root of 6, then I would get, uh, you know, an irrational number in that case, right? So um, I know now that if delta is a perfect square, now please note, then I know 
that the roots are rational, right? So I say roots are rational, okay? Maybe let me just highlight that in red so that you can, okay? So uh, I didn't even finish my thought there. So if it is a perfect square, right? So nine is a perfect square. Um, uh, you know, 25 is a perfect square and so on and so forth, right? So we know if delta is a perfect square, then we say we've got rational roots. If delta is negative, then we say that they are imaginary roots or non-real roots. If delta is positive, then we're dealing with real roots, right? Now, um, if delta is not a perfect square, is not a perfect square, so as I said, square root of 3, that would give us an irrational number, right? So if b squared minus 4ac gives us an irrational, um, I mean, uh, um, something that is not a perfect square, right? So then we know that the roots are irrational. Irrational, right? Um, so we know that roots are irrational, right? Now, then we say if delta is zero, right? Then we are dealing with equal roots. Now, let me explain that just a bit, right? So we say roots are equal, all right, uh, equal. Right, now, think about it. So we said x is equal to minus b plus minus the square root of delta. But now if delta is zero, now I want you to think about it. If delta is zero, then you'll say, sorry, divided by 2a here. Then it means that we only have one root, right? That's minus b over 2a, right? Whereas normally we would have that plus minus something else so that you get two roots where you will say uh, that's minus b over 2a uh, plus, uh, you know, um, whatever the value of delta is, uh, square root of delta over uh, 2a, or you can have minus b minus square root of delta over 2a, right? So in this case, what we're simply saying, you can have two roots if in this case you've got the value of delta not being zero. But if it is zero, what happens? It means that you've only got one root in this case, which is minus b over 2a. So then we say that roots are equal. Okay, so we use the word equal there. Um there we go. So if delta is zero, so we say you are dealing with equal roots. So this is where if you are drawing a graph, you'd find that the turning point lies on the x-axis, right? So those are called equal roots, right? So there we go there. Uh, so those would be equal roots. Okay, equal roots. All right. But of course, what happens if delta is not, uh, if delta is not zero, then what happens there? We say that roots are unequal, right? So it means you will have two separate roots. So roots, uh, no, let me maintain the color. Uh, roots are unequal. All right, so that is how the cookie crumbles when it comes to uh, the nature of roots. So what I would like to do next with you is now to take some examples of how we can apply this uh, in, in, you know, in, in practical uh, mathematical equations. Okay.